I don't even know why it's a debatable thing if a woman wants to wait to have sex with a man. I saw a few brothers saying that if a woman wants to withhold sex, then the brother should withhold his money and not pay for any dates. And honestly, yes, brother, don't pay for that date. As a matter of fact, let's just scrap the whole date, just scrap the whole idea. Because I've learned everything I needed to know. That some of these brothers equate like a $50 salmon dinner to the worth of my body. I'm not a sex worker. If you want that, just go get it. Just leave me alone. And the reality is double standards between men and women exist. The fact that men could have a high body count, but we're not supposed to, is a double standard that works in men's favor. The fact that men are the ones who are supposed to protect and provide works in our favor. Like, let's not be delusional. We talk about how we want better for our people and our communities and how the family should be the focus. But as soon as I say something that might inconvenience the brothers from getting what they want, then we're against that all of a sudden. I don't know why we act like our community wouldn't be in a better position as a whole if we were more choosy. She said a whole mouthful and just that, that last statement, our community would be better off if we were more choosy. And that goes both ways. Both sides need to choose better. Okay, guys, stop sleeping with these women over a $50 salmon dinner. Okay, ladies, stop sleeping with these guys over a $50 salmon dinner. Hello? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I personally don't think that they're sleeping with people over that. I know that. I'm just saying. I don't think like, that's the prize. I would hope that's not a prize. Hell, for some it is. Anyway. I think the what she's saying is it's it's all facts. We all need to be choosier with who we share our bodies with. That's that's just what it boils down to. I I my our oldest is ten. I teach him now. You have to be choosy who who you with who you want to spend your time with and who you give your body to. Because at the end of the day, when you give your body away, there's the potential to make another body, whether you like this person or not. There's also potential for left behinds, okay? They leave stuff behind. STDs, STIs, emotions, demons, all of that fun stuff. Stop. Just stop. Think better of yourself. And now you know y'all going to come in here talking about sexual freedom and liberation. Stop the foolishness. Please cut it out. Y'all are making this stuff up as y'all go along. Do I believe that there are some people out there who truly do feel truly free and empowered and all of those things when it comes to their freedom regarding who they they have sex with? Absolutely. I don't think that is the vast majority of us. I think many of us are pretending and we're faking the funk. And I say that not from my own personal experience, just from friends who have been probably more liberated than they should have with their bodies. And... Even in while doing it, the whole point in doing it was to make him happy and keep him around for longer. But lo and behold, that's not what happens because he treats you like a piece of tail. He didn't quit it, right? And then you're left feeling low and less than and all of those things. But even aside from that, in the era in which we live with all of the communic communicable diseases, sexually transmitted diseases, and unwanted children. Why would you risk it? I don't understand. If if you want it that bad, find you one faithful, right? Just 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 stick with that one. It don't have to be every other weekend. It's another one. And again, this is for men and women. We have to be choosier. We are literally creating our lineage. That's what's happening. And I love all the children, right? I do. Some of them are not good lineage. That's just true. And you know that because at some point, all of these adults were once children. And they're not good lineage. <laughs> they're not. They're not ideal. <laughs> Choose better. <laughs> Please. I'm begging you. Some some people will say that that's that's because they are a product of their parents, not because those children again choose better. No, no, I'm saying I'm I'm saying yeah, choose better. But I think w what you just said about them not being a a good show of of a good lineage. Um, I, I would say that a lot of people would probably say that those children that grew up to be adults, being the products of their parents. 
is why they turn out the way they are because maybe their parents weren't there or maybe the parent, neither the parents were, it goes were good. goes back so to maybe, the root of the problem to choose yeah, better. I, I get that. I understand. I understand. But what if both of them were not good choices? Both yeah. of them needed to choose better well, for themselves well, and if, for their mates. Right. But if their choices were limited because they weren't a good choice themselves, then we have a whole nother issue. But I, you took it now a child's type of route. I wanted to kind of back it up and okay. get, you know, to what she was actually saying and stay a little bit more surface for right now. Um, she talked about the whole dating situation and men, you know, getting upset that, you know, the woman is not willing to smash, you know, at the end of the date. Well, I took you on this date. I spent this money. So, you know what it is. I should be able to take you back to the house and, you know, cut it up or whatever y'all say you're a special kind of stupid ain't you you know uh well see that that's the thing see and you, you're kind of making me veer off my point but let me talk to what you just said you said it's special kind of stupid stupid i don't think so i think that what's happened is for some of these men they have been in situations where some of the women have allowed that situation to happen so they're just trying it out on other women. Now, can I say that that's stupid? No. But what I, I can say that that is uh, basically a reckless way to live because <laughs> how many women have you done this with where you felt where you've gotten lucky at the end of dinner and she let you smash because you took her on a date? Because a lot of times from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, a lot of these be like first and second dates. You don't know this person yet. Y'all just I don't as a male, I wouldn't want a lot of bodies. I, that just seems it seems unsanitary to me, especially how society is shaping up. Um, but let me pull it back again, back to the date. So this is such a catch 22 type of scenario because you hear me and talk about how. They don't want a 304 or a woman that slept around and been around the block. You know what I'm saying? But then you want to smash every woman you take on a date. So are you okay with taking these people that you declare as 304s on dates? Because once you sleep with her, then you are creating the type of environment that you say that you don't want for a wife. So what exactly is the end goal? And you, you you talk about these women and their high body counts. But you're in the number. Right. But you're in the number and and you and some of the men that think like you are actually creating these women with high body counts. So it's a it's a problem on both sides. Do I agree with high body counts? No. For women. Do I agree with high body counts for men? No. I don't agree with high body counts at all. This ain't and this has nothing to do with shaming anyone. You do whatever you want to do. Y'all are adults. Do whatever you want to do. I don't think it's safe. I, I don't, I don't, I think it's reckless behavior. That's just me. You know, you can take that how you want it. Not trying to shame you. If if you feel like you want to do that, you want to be free and you want to stick your peen in every woman and, or you, you want to let every man stick his peen in you. Hey, that's up to you. If you have no problem with that, do you? Um, but uh, it comes with a few issues. And I know you people will be just like, you know, well, if it's done safely, how many people are actually practicing safety? I'm telling you right now, not many, because syphilis is on the rise. OK, it's too many of y'all out here with syphilis. Young people. Why do y'all have syphilis? It ain't just syphilis, though. It's because, not. Because but you, you know, think about syphilis, and syphilis had died down. It wasn't a, a widely spread STD. Was now, it? It wasn't. Was, wasn't it? It wasn't. But, but it what, wasn't it, in our generation. It right. was for the older ones, yes. But for our generation, it had died down. It was one of the ones that were dying. It was It was low. Hmm, but the only, right? way, the only way you can pinpoint syphilis is if it's reported. Yes, but all women, all women are t all pregnant women are tested for syphilis true. when they come in. Okay. And I am also learning because I, I work in healthcare. I've been in healthcare for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we test a lot of people for syphilis, and a lot of y'all coming up positive, and it's not, 
It ain't you didn't just get it, okay? Because it's ocular syphilis and it's neurosyphilis. That means it's in your brain and your eyes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you got gonorrhea, chlamydia, HIV, and all these other things on top of it. You're not doing it safely. No, most people aren't doing it safely. A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all are raw dogging out there. Most of y'all, I believe, honestly, I have no way to back that up. But I do. But with with the numbers and the cases rises, cases rising in the STD and STI uh, faction, then I would have to believe that every every condom isn't just being split open. A lot of y'all don't like the way that latex feel, mm. and. That means a lot of y'all aren't being safe. And we all know that you, you, you can get herpes <laughs> with a condom if they're open sores. How many way. of y'all are actually doing it with the lights on? How many of y'all are actually going down there and inspecting, <laughs> you know, pulling back pubes and all this kind of stuff? I, I don't know. I guess in the 70s, people be getting waxed. So maybe you can see. Maybe it's just Only if the lights there. are on. I mean, are y'all turning people upside down to make sure things are all together and copacetic down there? Probably not. So y'all just doing everything willy nilly. And I could tell you right now where we live, herpes is very prevalent. Very, very, are. very prevalent. Listen and to me. OK, all of them are. It's not just one or two. Unfortunately, what I what I am seeing Okay, is if you have one, you probably also have three or four others. It, it's like a it's like a STD salad going on yeah. in these streets. Games. And I, I just want to say this. We got to stop saying do what you want. <laughs> do whatever do whatever you want because I think that we have started to live by that YOLO and do whatever you want as long as it makes you happy or do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting anyone else and we're taking that and we're running with it and we're doing stupid stuff. So what do you propose though? You stop saying, doing whatever I, you want just because I, you want to do it. You got to think it through. You're right. You're right. You do have to think it through. But see, the thing is, people are adults. They got to make their own decisions. There is no um, governing chief body standing over them. Uh, parenting adults. You are your own chief body standing you, over you. you. You have to think these things through mm -hmm. and not just do something because oh, it feels good in that moment. Mm -hmm. You have to think it all the way through from beginning to end. They do. No, they're not. Because if they no, no, were, no, no, they no. wouldn't be doing all of the things. No, that I'm they're saying doing. they do need to do that. No, oh. but you're saying that you got to stop saying, you know, or telling people, you know, do what you want. I simply say that because I realize all I can do is plant a seed, right? All I can do is say my piece and hope that you adhere to what I'm saying. But again, what I'm saying is a is an opinion. You know what I'm saying? And now if I was talking to children, which I hope children are listening and and saying, hey, what they saying makes sense. But if you're an adult, you may hear it and you may think that it makes sense. And then you, you have a faction of adults that hear this and they're just like, they're shaming us. And if you feel like this is shaming, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to shame you. However, I, I do think uh, a lot of these decisions are not very good decisions, but I can't make the decision for anyone else. They have to do it for themselves. So they have to want to do the things that we are saying right now. So that's why I say do what you want, because do I don't I'm, I'm not going to beat you to death and try to make you do something. I can tell you what I'm seeing happening in the public sector. I'm seeing STDs, seeing the STIs. I'm seeing them being on the rise. I'm seeing people dealing with different medical situations that they shouldn't have been dealing with had they been doing, uh, you know, doing things safely. So I get what you're saying. And I don't want to tell people to do what you want. I'm going to tell people <laughs> to stop doing what you want. Okay. Think it through. Yes, of course. Please. That's what our podcast Put is about. Put some thought process behind about it. Offering different opinions and thought processes that would allow people to be able to, you know, form a more critical thought pattern so that they can actually really think it through instead of just acting as life is just a pleasure pocket. Spontaneity is cool, but it's not cool when you're laying in the hospital on 
24-7 IV antibiotics because your brain is turning into Swiss cheese. You don't want that. You don't want that. Um, And that goes for more than just, you know, your your intimate partners. Just think it. Think life decisions right through. Right. And, you know, got a little heavy right there, but let's back it up to to what the (laughs) video was talking about. (laughs) But the other the other part of this is she said that. Men would be like, you know, well, you're not going to do X, Y, Z. So I'm just not going to spend my money. And she said, well, bro, don't spend the money. Let's go ahead and cancel the date. And I think that's great. I think that you should not be dating someone that is in the process of thinking that because I took you on a date that you owe me something. You owe me some type of um, nookie at the end of the night. Um, but it, but then you have some men that be like, well, you know, I got a three to five date minimum. You know what I'm saying? If I ain't got it within that time, then I'm just going to move on to the next person, which I respect because at least they have boundaries and they letting you know up front if they're letting you know up front. Now, do I think that's a, a, a good way to go about that? No, because, again, you don't know this person well enough for one, you to be sleeping with them and for two, them to be handing over their body to you. Um, and I know people would be like, well, they're not virgins. So why in the world I got to wait? Because it's their body. They don't have to do it. And you don't have to. It's your wallet. You don't have to do. You don't have to pay for five dates, bro. <laughs> if you choose to do so, you do at your own risk. But I can tell you right now, a date does not equate bars um, to <laughs> to having some type of sexual encounter with a woman. Can I say this, y'all? I think we should stop dating and get back to courting. What's the difference? Courting is more about spending time with someone and getting to know them. To me, dating has become what what extravagant thing can I do? What extravagant dinner can I take you to? What off the wall event or activity can we go and do that is, you know, social media worthy and things like that? But we're not really getting to know each other. We're not spending one on one time. I am a firm believer in a date does not have to cost two, three hundred dollars. Right. Course. You can go sit at a park and talk, buy an ice cream cone, bring an ice cream cone, bring a bottle of wine, get some juice. OK. And just sit and talk because the whole point of dating is to get to know someone. Mm-hmm. It's not about the activity that you're doing. It's about the person you're spending the time with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, no, four or five dates is not long enough for you to be saying, oh, I know this person long enough to allow them to enter my body or to enter this person's body. They're still a stranger. Mm -hmm. But when you've spent weeks or months actually courting and getting to know someone that's different it, mm-hmm. it's there it's it's like intimacy there are different levels to it right mm-hmm. dating and courting are different levels of getting to know someone and mm-hmm. i just in my opinion where dating is today it is not conducive to getting to know someone is it has become very much a showboat type of deal it's very shallow and guys are really coming out on the shorter end of the stick if we're being honest about the situation because Unfortunately, they're the ones expected to plan it and pay for it. Mm-hmm. We're expected to show up and look cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's it's not it's not fair to either party, in all honesty, because the guy is shilling out all the money, right? So he's looking for something in return. Right. And the woman is there getting her meal. But maybe she does actually like this guy and wants to get to know him. But because of all of this that's surrounding it, all the pressure surrounding it, you're not able to do that. Right. So to me, dating has become just something just to do. And it's, there's no intent behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's sad. Yeah. Uh, and because there's no intent, uh, the sad part of it is a lot of these people that are dating have kids. And they're not teaching their kids to date with intention. So it becomes a cycle. Um, so I would advise y'all to start thinking about dating with intent and start passing that thought pattern on to your kids because y'all like to say there's pee in the dating pool, but 
you swimming around in it, you're drinking the water, choking on it, and then you, you're basically feeding your kids like a bird with the same pee-pee pool. It's, it's, you got <laughs> to gotta do better. Um, this, back to what you were saying about thinking things through, if you look, take a zoomed out picture of what's happening and think this thing through, you'll see that, you know, while y'all are waiting around in this dating pool and talking about how trash it is and how this woman, all they want is for a dude to be uh, six foot and above, uh, have a six pack, um, be over six inches and six figures. And then you got the the women talking about, oh, uh, these dudes just want a BBL. No, they don't. Most dudes do not want a BBL. Please stop. But anyway, um, they want the woman to have a perfect body and they want her to be submissive. And they want the woman to just cook and clean and be bare. For- no, that's not true. But there are some men that actually want that. But. While you're waiting around thinking that the other side is one, that it's actually real people in the middle that is really just trying to work together. And every, and they just keep getting, you know, keep getting stepped over, keep getting worked over because they keep meeting the people that want these these things that that Outliers. were just known, that was just named. And you, everyone's missing e- each other. So got to get to the point to where, like you just said, the, the whole courting aspect, which which may be a lost art because who was there to teach us? Because if this conversation about the whole dating and relationship situation has been going on since what 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 year was that that little special that we was watching um, and they was talking about uh, they, the special special that came on, I think it was on, like on CBS. And there was the young girls and they were talking about how they didn't want the dad. Oh, that was like in the that 70s. That was in the 70s, yeah. They it was, is they 2023. Were in the 70s. That's a half of a century. So if they were, those those were boomers, yeah. I believe. Those were boomers. And if the boomers <laughs> were the parents the to the, millennium, the millennials, who is teaching the millennials how to do this thing correctly? TV? Look like TV. And you see, you see how much TV has has raised you. And honestly, TV has raised the millennials and social me- media. The, no, not even social media. Yes and no. Because I got on Facebook in 2003. But I was I was pretty much I was a college student at that point in time. But the thing is, millennials were also being raised by other millennials. Like your friends. Especially if we want to talk about stuff that was happening in the 80s where the, where parents were just, you don't even know where your kids are. Got a whole commercial. <laughs> do you know where your kids are? Why I gotta, Why do I have to have a commercial to ask me that question? Oh, I don't know where he... Dang, I ain't seen him all day. <laughs> That's crazy. I could not imagine. We helicopter parents. We are. So, we are. And I, I, yeah. Say he, what you want. He worse than I am, though. I'm proud of it. Okay, <laughs> I know where my kids are. They're not getting kidnapped. They're not getting kidnapped. And and I know what's going in their head, in their eyeballs, <laughs> and in their bodies. So say what you want. Um, but, yeah, for me, the takeaway from this is, is, is guys, that woman does not owe you anything just because you took her out. Nope. And that man don't owe you nothing either. Oh, does not you don't owe even you. owe you the meal that you think you entitled to. Right, and it is a privilege for both of you. Right, and and stop overlooking these in the park dates or these these dates where you can just sit down and have some tea with one another. Because on a date, I would assume you would want to have some type of discussion to see if the person can even hold a conversation right. worthy of you. You know what I'm saying? People don't like to just be wasting time talking about small talk on a date. That's whack. And that's a way that's literally a waste of time to me. To me, I don't like to just talk about a whole bunch of nonsense. And and y'all all all on the dates with your IG up and your. Right. Taking pictures of the food. 
phone sitting on the table every time I go off, you checking it and stuff. Or like, you scrolling. Right. That's the, instead of talking to the person right in front of you. You showing no interest in this person. Like who the heck would want to be with something like that? No one. No one. Uh but I'ma say it like this. Y'all do what you want to do. Don't she do gonna say do. don't do what you want to do. Don't but don't do better. I want you guys to do better as well. However, I am not your father. Okay. <laughs> I'm not God. I'm not anybody that is in control of your life. I, I would prefer that things work out and go in a better direction. And I would hope when I say do what you want to do, you would actually critically think about these scenarios and make better choices. Do what's best for you. Do what is in your best interest. And that is going to require you to put some thought into it. And when we say, when she says, I would assume when she says what's in your best interest, we're not, she's not saying do what's in the best interest of your pleasure pocket. And that's not in the sexual manner. That is, that goes in all facets of your life. I would, I would hope you would take that and, and ram that in your head and understand that, hey man, you really got to think about this thing. And, and I, I hope that the younger people, early 20s, are taking this in and just thinking about, you know, the longevity of, of their adulthood and how things play will play out and the consequences from the decisions you make if you make them in haste. But yeah, I, I don't have anything else to say. I got nothing else. Just think it through. Yeah, think it through. That's all I can say. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. See y'all in the next one. Peace. Good night.